Welcome to Cutting It Straight, where the issues and concerns of our times are examined in the light of the Word of God. And good evening, and welcome to the latest edition of Cutting It Straight. Uh, my name is Nikita Wharton. I'm your host for this evening. And with me, I have Pastor Bruce David Bell, the pastor of Berean Bible Fellowship here in Richmond, Virginia. Pastor Bruce, how are you this evening? I'm doing well, thank you. Very good, excellent. The title of today's discussion is A Melting Pot of Confusion, Identifying False Teaching. And in order to, uh, to, to kind of clarify uh, that title, we wanna let you know that we are referring to those who oppose the truth of the Bible. So Pastor Bruce, would you be kind enough to uh, open up our discussion with some thoughts on that particular subject? Since uh, the time that uh, it was written, the truth of the word of God has been attacked by those who question and who reject the facts that are written in the pages of the Bible. And uh, as we know, some of those attacks are obvious. Some of them are a little more subtle. And sometimes the teaching sounds like the truth, but after a careful analysis, we find that the teaching is wrong. But the problem is that the, the world in which we live, there is the belief that there is no absolute truth and that whatever we believe is acceptable just because we believe it. And so, we end up with a melting pot of confusion with many people who think that they are on their way to heaven when in fact they are on their way to hell. Mm. Wow. Well, <clears throat> in regards to, uh, to false teaching, I'm sure many people have heard uh, the words cult and false religion used. Um, is there a difference between those two terms? Uh, a cult has generally been defined uh, as a system of religion, or it actually can be a social movement uh, with a, a group of people uh, who follow the direction of a person or even of an idea. But as we look at it, we can trace the origin of that cult back to a person or back to a group of people who claim that they are the only authority that has been ordained by God to interpret the scriptures. And generally, cults are a group with practices and with beliefs that are outside the mainstream of accepted Christianity. While false religion has generally been defined uh, as an established group, sometimes a larger group, spread out over a large geography. And many times the people who follow those false religions give the appearance of the truth. And some may even uh, be a part of mainstream Christianity. But the fact is, what they are teaching is not the word of God. They teach things uh, like the worship of man-made images or of created things or of people. And that group may have taught the, the truth at one time, but over the years, false doctrine and false practices have crept into that group. So in fact, now it is false religion. Mm. So what is to be our defense against this false teaching? Our defense, our best defense, and perhaps our only defense, is to know what the Bible really teaches. That's the only way that we can identify those who would seek to lead us down a path of destruction. The challenge comes when those who teach this false doctrine mix that doctrine with the truth, and so it may sound like the truth. And, and one thing is certain, that where the truth is being taught, there will be those 
who are not far behind teaching lies. And so we have to think of the words of Paul who said to Timothy in 1 Timothy 4.16, we must pay close attention to our doctrine. We, we must pay close attention to our teaching. Then we can confidently stand up for the truth of the Bible. And so we will stand up against the lies of false teaching. Mm. There seems to be um, <clears throat> an abundance of cults today. Um, why have they, the number of those grown and, and, and grown in strength as well? You're right. Um, cults and false religions continue to multiply and to, to flourish all around the world. And I think that is true, first of all, uh, because we're approaching the end of the age. We are drawing closer and closer to the return of Jesus Christ. And so the enemy has stepped up his efforts to draw people away from Jesus Christ, away from the truth and into an eternity without Christ. But I think these cults continue to multiply uh, also because the true church, we have failed to understand and to accurately teach the truth. And so we have left the door open for error, even among those who do know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So true. Many uh, of these cults use the Bible as a part of their teaching. Uh, can you offer us any insights into as to how we can meet this challenge? Um, each cult, each brand of false religion has its own unique belief system. And so they are not receptive to the facts of scripture if they differ from their interpretation of the scripture. And when they are confronted with these inconsistencies, rather than use the Bible, they tend to fall back on the teaching of their founder or of their leader and his or her particular interpretation. And that leader usually claims to have divine authority and understanding of the scriptures, so he or she claims to have the only correct interpretation. So, as a result, the people in that group tend to feel isolated. They tend to feel isolated from everyone else because they believe that everyone else is being deceived. Hmm. Can you give us some guidance as to some of the core beliefs that we should be aware of uh, among these cults? Well, we certainly don't have the time to, uh, to go through all of them, uh, but uh, the Bible does teach that Jesus Christ is God. Some teach that he is not God. Some teach that he was created by God. Some teach that he did not die to pay for our sins. Some teach that he did not physically rise from the dead. There are others who use uh, other books in addition to the Bible, and they claim that they are divinely inspired, and they use those books to validate their teaching. Uh, there are some who believe that their founder or their leaders have been enlightened by God, and so they cannot be questioned. There are others who, who focus on things like self-improvement or on good deeds as the way to reach heaven or to reach a state of what they would call cosmic consciousness. Now, there are some who also believe that uh, everyone goes to heaven, that, that all faiths will take us there. Some believe that man is basically good and will become like a god. Some teach that there is no such thing as sin, only sinful 
actions. Mm. All of these things are marks of false teaching. You know, uh, out in the marketplace and when we're out and about or sometimes at home, we uh, sometimes encounter uh, people who are representing these cults and false religions. How are we to, to deal with these people when we are confronted uh, by them? That's a good question. Um, many times those who follow the teaching uh, of cults uh, or of false religions are sincere in what they believe, but they are misled. And here's the thing. They have been taught to think of the words of the Bible differently than what the Bible teaches. They have redefined those words. And so as we speak to them, we need to be careful. Uh, we need to look up the context of those words in the Bible that they claim support their definition of those words. We need to define those words up front. For example, a, a word like salvation has a different meaning to those in false religion. They sometimes teach that salvation means to become one with the universe uh, or to become one with God or to become uh, one with themselves. They stress words like love mm. and tolerance and they tend to avoid words like sin or evil or the necessity of the sacrifice of Christ as the only way for us to be saved. You know, some even teach that there is no such thing as heaven or hell. They reject it. To begin our discussion with them, we must find some common ground and we must work from there carefully defining and clarifying as we go. Amen to that. Amen. Can you give us some closing thoughts as we kind of wind down our session tonight? Yeah. Despite what many people say, all roads do not lead to God. Jesus himself said that he, he said, I am the way, mm -hmm. the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Bible is, in fact, God speaking to us. But there are those who have distorted the truth of his word. And we need to remember that a lie sounds like the truth to those who do not know the difference. It's our responsibility to prayerfully bring the truth of Jesus Christ as that truth has been revealed to us in his word and to reach those who are sitting in darkness, to reach those who've been blinded by the lies of the enemy of our soul. Mm. Pastor Bell, thank you so much for um, enlightening us this evening. Thank you. The, yes, the tonight's topic, a melting pot of confusion, identifying false teaching. To you, our viewing audience, we wish to thank you for, uh, for tuning in. I want to make you aware that we are available. We have a website, um, bbfva.org. We are on YouTube, uh, Facebook. Um, so you can get this particular segment from those venues uh, when it is uh, uploaded there. And we have per, uh, other segments as well that are Part of, uh, well, sermon audio is another uh, avenue where you can hear not only sermons, uh, but uh, Bible stories that we have uh, produced and also these particular talk show segments as well. So there is a multitude of um, media outlets where you can get um, all that we have uh, produced and, and, and what's available for you to see. So for those of you who are watching, we, we thank you for tuning in. Uh, we pray that you would uh, would get something out of all of this. We're doing this to to try to enlighten um, those of, of Christians and, and non-Christians as well as to uh, what God's word says and, and uh, what saith the Lord. 
So we thank you all for, uh, for joining us and we pray that you would uh, see fit to, to listen, to watch and to tell others about what you've seen and what you've heard so that everyone could, uh, could learn exactly uh, what God has to say for this hour. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you.